Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this episode of Inspirational Muslims, I will be interviewing Farah Azam. Farah Azam is a London-based artist and entrepreneur. After graduating from the University of Westminster with a BA in Psychology and Criminology, she decided to explore her inner creativity. Inspired by her many travels and natural artistic flair, she set up her first business, Bespoke Kenna, in 2011. She took the traditions of henna and infused it with various art forms from different cultures to create her signature East meets West style. Her designs are very carefully handcrafted into a range of surfaces including home decor, fabric, perfume bottles and musical instruments. Her talents have not gone unnoticed with recognition from some of the world's largest media outlets including CNN News. With a growing reputation, she has attracted high-profile retail clients including Giorgio Armani, Aqua de Palma, Harrods and Selfridges. She provides both artistic and business coaching to aspiring creative entrepreneurs as well as using her skills for humanitarian causes. She is unrivaled in her field, putting both passion and skill into each project with a meticulous attention to detail and quality. Assalamu alaikum Farah. Thank you so much for making the time from your busy schedule to speak with us today. Honestly, I'm really honoured. Thank you so much for having me. Farah, I've, I know you as a friend and I, and I know you as one of, a, one of the inspirational uh, Muslims uh, in the community, Masha, doing some amazing things. Thank you. Um, and much of the audience will probably have been following your work and they know what you're about. But I would like to ask you, like, how would you describe yourself and what are your main focuses on at the moment? Okay, so first and foremost, I'm a mother. Um, I've got two beautiful boys, Aid and Zachariah, so that is my number one priority in life. Sure. Um, but I'm also an artist, and it was something that I kind of got into by chance. I was just sort of doodling, and, and it was just something that was I wasn't taking very seriously, and I didn't know that later on it would turn into a business. So at the moment, I would call myself an artist, a creative designer. Um, sure. And and you also uh, have your um, bespoke uh, academy. Wait, yeah. Shall I? So I um, so I began my journey about nine or ten years ago. Um, started creating art, and then I sort of had a lot of people on my social media reaching out to me and telling me that they'd like to learn. And so I created um, a course um, which I run from Sabas University in Central London. And um, yeah, so I train people on a two day intensive course where I'll teach them not only the practical side of creating the sort of art that I create, but also like a business mentoring or sort of teaching them how to run social media, how to get their how to get their name out, how to get themselves out there. So, yeah, I've been running that since I think 2011. And I also run workshops um, you know, group workshops. And I've been invited by like, you know, places like the Wallace Museum to run back to back workshops there. And I think not just myself, probably a lot of the audience as well have at some point uh, purchased your, some of your beautiful bespoke products. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that and your collaboration. You've had so many collaborations, mashallah, uh, with the mainstream uh, retail and and uh, you, you have an, a lot of influence as well, mashallah, in the whole uh, uh, Muslim community and all the wider creative uh, world out there as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So I began just as a small company. I just started creating like canvases and candles. And initially my customers were, as they always are, sort of family, friends and friends. And um, because what I was doing was quite different back then when I'd started about nine or ten years ago, I think it got quite a lot of attention. And um, my work started to grow, you know, my social media started to grow. And um, from that, I guess I got other opportunities. And um, I was found by initially um, Giorgio Armani, who uh, gave me a call and asked me to come and create some some um, some samples for them for um, a promotional site that they had. Um, and kind of it all started from there. So my first collaboration was with Giorgio Armani, where I hand painted perfume bottles for them exclusively for Harrods and Selfridges. And then from, from, from that collaboration, sort of it led to me doing work with Aqua de Palma, Urban Decay, uh, Galan, Pen Halligans. Um, so yeah, it's been really amazing and quite surreal actually. Mashallah, mashallah, man. I continue to bless your journey. Thank you so much. I've also, um, you know, we've um, seen on the social media, mashallah, that you've also uh, been uh, partaking in a lot of. Uh, representation for the Muslim community in the House of Parliament and, and also you, you, you've done a Eid in the Square 
painting for for the Mayor of London. Tell us a bit more about that because I think that's fascinating what you've done there. Oh, thank you. Um, so I was invited, I think, a couple of years ago by the Mayor's office um, to do a live painting in Trafalgar Square. And um, what they wanted me to do is sort of um, do something which sort of represented the Islamic faith, but as well as sort of like con combining it and infusing it with something quite British, because obviously it was going to be, um, you know, presented in London. Um, so I felt like that piece that I created, it was actually the Lon a London landscape and it had sort of Eastern inspired patterns um, inside them. So that, that painting was quite close to my heart because I felt like it was a representation of who I am. I'm a very proud Londoner, but I'm also from an Islamic background. And so I felt like that piece really infused my two identities. Um, so that was quite special. There was quite a large audience. Um, and some of the stuff that I did with um, uh, the house, the House of Lords, was just some sort of um, some inspirational um, talking about kind of my journey and how I've sort of contributed to this country, and sort of talking a little bit about my Islamic art. That wasn't as related to my my art, but just Brit the contribution of British Muslims overall to this country. I think when I first began my journey. Um, one of the things I really wanted to do is, I, I've, I like henna, I like, you know, a lot of my work is inspired by henna, but obviously henna is typically used on, on the body. And um, what I wanted to do is, I think in our culture, henna's not really given enough appreciation, you know, it's kind of, it's not seen as like a proper sort of job. Mm. Um, so what I wanted to do is, I wanted to do something a little bit different with henna. I wanted to take it more mainstream and sort yeah. of like allow people to appreciate it for, for its beauty and you know it's quite extraordinary because if you think about it henna is a natural plant and um, you know a lot of people think that henna dates back to sort of I don't know South Asia or something but actually studies that were done on you know mummies in 1200 BC showed henna being used on, on mummies and um, so this goes way back it's such an ancient art form um, so I really wanted to educate people on, on sort of henna, but although all my work is now not really inspired by henna, I kind of, I found that I've kind of taken inspiration from everywhere. But for me, it was very important to get into the mainstream and show, allow everyone to sort of see and appreciate Eastern inspired art, henna inspired art. Um, so I think I managed to do that with getting it into sort of like, yeah, not just sure. Selfridges and Harrods, but also my recent collaboration was in Fortnum and Mason, which is obviously very, it's a very British, it's a very Brit British um, department store. Um, so yeah, so I think I've been able to sort of like show Henna in a different light and also um, show my sort of contribution into sort of like infusing it with different art forms. Mashallah. And you've clearly been able to do that because now a lot of so many people are mainstream are aware of this, subhanAllah. Getting into selfridges and heritage itself is a is a massive thing with those collaborations, mashallah. So for segueing nicely into this is uh in your journey you must have had so many challenges um to date. What would you say has been your greatest challenge to date and how did you come overcome this? So I think um I studied psychology at university um one of my brothers is a doctor, the other one is a scientist, and I think it was expected from me to sort of like go on to what a career path which would be seen as a proper career, you know, like my I think my dad probably wanted me to be like a lawyer or, or a psychologist even. Um, but I did something quite unconventional with my life and I decided that I wanted to be an artist. And initially I don't think I had the support um, that, I, that I'd want, you know. Um, it was kind of like, you know, you're wasting your time and, and this isn't really going to get you anywhere. You're not going to make any money. It's just, you know, you haven't spent all your years in education to now become an artist. So I don't think it was really a respected sort of career mm -hmm. choice. And um, so I think that was probably one of my biggest challenges and um, just sort of like convincing family that, no, actually, you know, I, if I put my mind to it, I can really make something of it. And for me, it was very important to be happy above anything else. And, you know... For me, I'd kind of like rather be, I'd rather take that risk and be happy than be kind of stuck in a job where I wouldn't really be happy. Like I, you know, I wouldn't, not saying there's anything wrong with being a lawyer, but it was just not something I was very interested mm. in. And um, so I think that would probably be one of my biggest challenges. Um, another one was probably because I started this journey when I first had my child. And so it's kind of like juggling my time because I had this young baby and I was, you know, I, I, with art, you need a lot of time because, yeah. you know, it's not something that you can just sit down and 
do and then that's it you have to kind of like think you have to you know do little sketches you have to take out all your painting materials and I found that this was quite a challenge to do when my kids were quite young um so I feel like I was a bit behind in that sense but yeah I caught up yeah mashallah you overcame those challenges Manla. so for uh, in terms of your milestones and you've had plenty of milestones mashallah in such a uh, a small amount of time subhanallah um what has been your greatest um milestone that's close to your heart so far um I, I, yeah i would say it was probably my first collaboration that i did with armani um because this was when i was really properly recognized and there's a story that I don't really tell that many people um well actually I have started speaking about it more recently it was a little bit embarrassing to talk about it initially but um when I had my first collaboration with um Armani I was actually pregnant and I was when they called me I thought it was a prank I was like there, there's no way that this is happening <laughs> so I remember thinking it was a prank so when they called me they were like look we want you to come into our office immediately and um you know I was just like yeah sure I guess I was over excited and um so I was quite heavily pregnant I was on my way to the station I actually fell over mm-hmm. and um you know I kind of blanked out for for probably about 30 seconds and um you know when I got up eventually I was sort of like bleeding I had like blood on my like you so, know I had blood on my knees and I had um yeah I had a few grazes um but obviously above anything you know I was pregnant and you know it's quite risky but I knew that if I called my parents and I told them that you know this has just happened they wouldn't allow me to go to this meeting and it was so important for me to go to this meeting when well, now thinking back to it obviously it was silly of me but you know I was so desperate to go to this meeting and you know I made my way there and everything went well and I got the collaboration obviously I went and got checked at the hospital straight afterwards but it was just it was such an exciting moment for me that nothing was going to get in my way with this and um mm. yeah and it was just like it was the first time that I was I felt like I'd really sort of been recognized and I was just like wow such a huge brand wants to work with me like it was really it's been an incredible feeling and mashallah you you went you followed your dream you followed your heart and then subhana later on everyone once they saw your passion they right you know everyone's come behind you and, and now supporting you inshallah yeah. which is great which segues nicely into my next question is you know throughout our lives subhanallah we have at different stages of our life we have uh, different role models and people who really inspire us and you know shape and influence our thoughts you know role models that are come in a uh, different period so what has been who do you think has been your greatest role model to date that's close to your heart like someone who's been a prominent role model in your life i think i have lots of role models yeah. i think i learn from everyone yeah um i think i learned from my friends i've learned from my teachers i've learned from my family um and above all i think i've learned from from my experiences um I, I you know there are certain artists that I'm inspired by but they're not living artists so I can't say that they've inspired me I mean I'm inspired by so many living artists you know people that you sort of come across on social media just people that are really passionate yeah. really, really passionate but I can't I can't really say there's one specific yeah. person it would just be like people that I meet on my day to in my day to day life yeah. really much I know that's uh, can resonate with that it's a continuous continuous yeah. inspiration isn't it Okay so inshallah so we talked about your challenges and greatest achievement close to your heart and and the um role models that you've had in your life and uh, numerous people who you've inspired and been inspired by as well for a, how do you deal with um stress now mindfulness um is, is something that's out there at the moment it's on top of everyone's radars and organizations and it's a it's a talking point uh, amongst the community everyone has a different way of dealing with stress What's Farah Azam's way of dealing with stress? So it's funny that you asked this question because this whole journey began during a very stress- stressful time of my life. Yeah. It actually I was I was at a very low point in my life and I would say that I was probably borderline depressed and that's actually why I needed to take on a hobby and I wanted sort of a creative outlet and I felt that my art really helped me with that. And um so yeah, I would say my artwork in a nutshell has really helped me 
with stress and also teaching people who are kind of going through the same things that I was going through at that point in my life and seeing how it's helping to change them and how it's transforming their lives because a lot of the people that come to my training um, are people that are going through difficult times in their life and they are actually just doing it for mindfulness interesting and as a form of therapy even and it's it's always been interesting to me to sort of link the two the art and mental health because obviously my educational background is in psychology but my passion is art so it's kind of in a way bringing my two passions together I guess so I know that's pretty really interesting and very very insightful for uh, everyone you know um, wants to leave some sort of a legacy in the world what is the impact that you want to have what does Farah Azam want to be known for what is the impact you want to have in the world being authentic and following my dreams and working hard and doing so with integrity perfect mashallah for uh, it's been an absolute pleasure i uh, would like to ask you because i'm not uh, there's a lot of people who will be watching who already follow you on social media but what is the best way for people to um, follow you online on uh, different platforms and what's your preferred method for people to reach out to you okay so you can email me um info at farahazam.com i have two instagram pages which i'm very active on so i have one which is kind of just lifestyle and everything else that i do aside from art which is farah.azam and then i also have my account which is just dedicated to my art which is bespoke henna so these are probably the best ways to sort of contact me and see all the work that i do perfect jazakallah khairan allah continue to bless you with all the great work that you're doing to inspire so many people and thank you so much for making the time thank today thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the interview. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're alerted as we upload more inspirational Muslim videos.